Oh. Hello, everyone. Oh. My music is going all weird in my ears right now. Because basically every time I click on something, it bursts really, really loud and then goes back down to where I have it before, which is quiet, where it's difficult for me to hear it on my headphones, but appears to be loud enough for everybody else to be able to, uh, be able to hear it. But welcome. Welcome to the stream, as it is. Those few who may be there. Uh, I'll be honest. I'm kind of wore out from this week. My brain is kind of just melted into a pile of mush, and I really don't want to do anything right now. I gotta be quite frank. I just kind of like sitting here, listening to the music. Why the heck did the stream information not update? Oh. information. What do you mean information could not be updated? Why is that what I always get? Can I refresh and have it still be there? Okay. Yeah, it's still here. All right. the video preview so it doesn't cause any any more dropped frames we've already had quite a few all right um you know what i'm i've been trying to think of like something i might want to work on something i might want to do something that it's occurred to me that i can do probably here is uh this... Whoa. Uh, no. Get off of that thing. No idea what that was. It was not good, whatever it was. Okay, this one's not too bad. This is not too bad. I kind of like this. All right. Okay. But I have my little RTS lava blocker that I was working on a while back, and I, I can't recall what was happening with it, but I, I do recall that I was having some problems. So I figure I might fire it back up and kind of try and see what was going on with it. Okay, uh, uh, illegal instructions. Okay, hmm. That would be why it is, uh... Maybe the illegal instructions are the whole reason why I was, uh, having issues with it. Might be one of the reasons why I was having issues with this thing, uh, 
a while back. And just the thing just for some reason broke without warning is just... Maybe it's because... Oh my gosh, what is with this? I keep getting these audio glitches where it just bursts really loud for no reason. I'm starting to get really irritated with Rhythm Box. It's been doing that more lately. There. And this one... There we go. All right, let's save these. Let's run it again. All right, there we go. Okay, cool. I actually fixed a lot of problems, it seems. Oh, I remember what I was needing to do. I was trying to figure out how to fix the... how to get the blocks to move the appropriate locations. Now get them away. Oh no, he's dragging it with him. Stick him in the fire and have him die. No, I don't have that. Oh gosh. Okay, I don't know what's going on with this right now. But okay then, let's uh... Let's start looking into the code here, and let's try and let's try and break some things down. Let's um. Actually, you know what this needs? This just needs a simple UI, something where if you select two guys or more. Uh, let's see. Uh, so just something, if you select a guy, you can tell him go pick up that block, and then he'll go to the appropriate sectors. And I'm not going to do it that way, I'll just have him pick it up, uh, both at the back, and they'll lift it up, drop it down, drop it somewhere, I can, well, I don't know how I'm going to do that. Uh... But you know what? I need a UI regardless. Do I have anything in the form of a UI build? I do not. Alright, let's take a look in the game files then. Yeah, lo and behold, I've got a lot of, uh... different games and projects and things. Many of which I've worked on for a long time, many of which I've completely burned out on right now. But, let's go to my simple bridger, what I built when... during my YouTube streams. Alright. We've now got that button source code that's always really nice. And you know what, let's also snag that includes folder as well, just because that was some really nice... Really nice, just simple cut and dry, clean code. So I didn't have to keep repeating myself in every single header file. Yeah, replace it, why not? I don't think I was using the includes on here anyway. Oh dear. This is that includes file. Let's clean this stuff out. This is when I was trying to make that Windows port of the Bridger game, and it did not work. Okay. That should be good there. All right, that's that includes file taken care of. Now let's um, I think this is actually the chemical plant music from Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Yeah, chemic trick, chemics tricks. 
Yeah, it's that, that awful, or what I felt was an awful chemical plant, because I always got stuck. <sighs> okay. All right. What's that? What's that? What's that? Let's let's get into the game. Let's get the game header file up here. Let's get them grouped over here together. Let's make, let's make a run and make sure we didn't mess something up without changing out that includes folder. Font cache. Oh, right. Shout out to font cache, because that thing was great for doing text. I didn't know about it with the... Uh, that's what I'm working on. I need Bridger. SDL font cache. Shout out to Grimfang4 for that. There we go. Now let's add those to this project as well. So font cache.h. And then dot c for the source code file. There we go. Alright. Let's rebuild. Right, and I don't have the linker set up for it. So of course it doesn't build. Why would it? Dash L S D L two underscore T T F. Believe that should work. Yep, that worked. Okay. Oh, hello, Santa Paws. Welcome to me just puttering around and trying to keep my tendonitis from getting worse. While still maintaining my weekly stream requirements. Uh, this is a... This is me programming. Uh... It is, um, this is done in C++ code. It is an, it's, it's, I kind of call it an RTS, but it's just a top-down game where uh, you use these little guys. They'll eventually be replaced with, like, actual guy sprites, but they're just placeholder circles right now. You have this lava flow coming in over here, slowly but surely. And the idea is going to be that... You are trying to block it using various Tetris blocks. Currently, I only have two of them made and showing up. But, uh... Just b believe me, it took me probably three months just to get the guys to move around like I want them to. Because that was a massive mess to try and put together. But, uh, yeah, this is a, it's a game I'm working on. I've been struggling with it. Uh, I need some way of being able to command the units a little more thoroughly. So, as a result, I'm going to start adding in some UI options that are going to start showing up. I'll probably put them up here. Uh, yeah, I think it may have actually been this same project. Actually, I might have been working on this back then. I'm not sure. I've worked on a lot of different games. I mean, it, it, there's this list of just different. Yeah, there, there's all these different games here that I've just kind of worked on. Like this, I mean, this was like I'm trying to teach myself a more advanced APIs. Uh, this one's another ver another attempt at the tutorial. This is my third attempt at it. I'm, I keep getting bogged down all in the same location. So I was right around lesson two, right at the beginning. Uh, there's this one that I've been trying. This is the lava blocker. I'm working on the second iteration of this game. Uh, there was this horde RTS I was trying to do that that became a just a pile of just a giant mess. Just a giant mess all around. 
So I'm trying to... I'm, I'm trying to salvage this one. I mean, I'm going back to... I'm going back to what I was doing kind of before, and I'm going to see if I can actually come back with this now that my head's cleared and I'm not bogged down by everything anymore. Just try and come back to it and see if I can clear my... or uh, clean it up and maybe see if I can salvage it. So, yeah, well, thank you. Thank you. It does literally nothing right now. But I'm trying to work on that. It's just one thing at a time. Oh gosh, I forgot how much stuff I had in this. Goodness. Oh right, I even had to like... I have the blocks manually built, just the individual squares. Oh man. Yeah, now all this is starting to come back. Like I actually had indiv have individual sprites for each section of each of the individual blocks because it's faster than using the geometry code. And I want the game to run stably, and you can't do that when using the geometry code. Alright, but enough of that. Okay, let's... see... Okay, here with the camera... Um... Let's just add in a couple of buttons here. Um... Include button dot h. Hang on. What's this? Unresolved. In ident includes unresolved. Oh, no, it's resolved. Thank you. Thank oh shoot. Thank you for clearing the flag, net beans, you piece of junk. And as the as the hashtag suggests in the stream title, I am streaming this on Linux which is quite impressive considering the amount of work it takes to OBS, to get OBS going. Uh, bye. Okay. Bye, I guess. Let's get a couple of buttons going. We'll just go uh, character, uh, we'll go player, UI. I'll make it two. Two buttons. Let's see. I'm gonna need a button to pick it up. A button to place it. Um, and then push the wall. I'll just, I'll just go. Uh, let's see. Yeah. You know what? Place. Uh, pick up. Put it down. Move the wall. So we'll say three. And where is my setup here? Here we go. This is it. Initializers. Okay. Um. Let's go. Player. UI. UI. Zero. Dot. Let's place the button. X will be at 20, so I'll put it in the upper left. Alright, and this one... Make this one... Uh, 50, I'll say. This one, I'll make 80. Yeah, honestly, I'm not sure if I've actually worked on this project on stream or if it was a completely different one. I don't... I don't know. It's been so long. I mean, it's been, like, more than a year since I've streamed on Twitch. I've mostly been streaming on YouTube just because it saves on bandwidth. But Twitch seems to be maybe better? I don't know. I'm giving it a shot. So. Alright, let's see. So the buttons are placed. 
Let's size the buttons now. Um, make them 30 wide. I'll make them... Uh, let's go 15, no, uh, 20 tall. These things might be ridiculously tiny. As a result, we'll have to just do some tests, do some tweaking. After all, I wouldn't even be at the part to call this even a technical alpha yet. So... Player UI zero dot. Is there anything else I need to do? Yes, I need to set the background color. Um, I need them to stand out nicely against the brown of the dirt. So I'm gonna go with. Mm. Hmm. I guess I'll make it a nice, like a dark green here. Hmm. Actually, you know what? I'm just gonna I'm just gonna do it this way. I'm gonna do a for loop here. Okay, let's just say, let's just get rid of these. Here we'll say I, and this one will be I as well. Super Meat Boy. I haven't seen that one being a, a part of this. I didn't know that Super Meat Boy even had soundtrack remixes. That's quite surprising, really. Hmm. Okay. All right. Um, next. Let me think. What else do I need to do here? Um, I need to set the labels. So, I remember having to do this now. Oh, but I can't... I can't do that with, um... Can't do that in the loop, but... Can I run the setup in the loop? Uh, set up the screen, the texture, starting X, starting Y, and a font to pass it. Nope, I can't do that either. Well, actually I probably could, but I just need to... put this here so that this way all this stuff is taken care of and then the I can run the plate I can run the setup and then the placement will then override where the setup put it so that'll be handy uh, let's see we have screen and then we have null so I'm not passing it a texture. Say zero, zero, because I've already got those overridden. And now I need to make that font. Um, did I already have that anywhere? No, I didn't. Okay. Um, I'll just stick it right here. Uh, it's FC font pointer UI font. I believe. 
And then... Shoot, I need to look that up. Uh, SDL... Font Cache. How do you use this again? <laughs> okay, you create the font. I'll go up here. Underneath all the textures. Go, uh, font, UI font. FC, create font. And then FC, load font. UI font. Okay, uh, font, and then the renderer, so the screen. Oh, and then I need to have a font in the files. Why do I keep closing that window anyway? I keep having to go back. Um, ha, <laughs> flowcharts. That's an easy way to lose, com I'll completely lose all interest in a project you were passionate about at one point in time in your life. Flow charts. And then we'll go here. Free mono.tgf. We'll make it size 15. And then make color. See, that's making it black. I don't necessarily want that, but I'll leave it there for now. Dev Dark Cloud? Dark Cloud? It's not a game I recognize. Alright, but let's make the color on these, um... You know, let's make it white, and let's see if it hurts my eyes or not. There we go. Alright, and then... Um... Okay, and then you go... If it is equal to true, okay, uh, there's that, and then, um, hmm. Yeah, I need to wait. Why am I showing is offline? Why am I dropping frames? That gummit twitch. Bad gummit twitch. Everything was fine till you decided to crash on me. Sheesh. Uh, now there are those audio glitches again. What's with that? I'm about done with you, Rhythm Box. I'm about done with you. There are other players available. Far more other players available. They're far better than yours. Or than you. Okay, so... Player select count is equal to I. Grab square. I don't know what 
the heck just happened with all my windows? I don't care at this point. Okay. Boy, this whole thing just seems like a mess. This is just a mess. Okay. Player one, operate. Get under character where it's operate. Yep, under here, okay. All right, I'm remembering how much, how much of this was just spaghetti. Oh, this is... Oh man, this is rough. Okay. Label draw show up in the in this. Yes, it does. Okay. Don't have to worry about that then. All right, I've got the. I need to pass the font into here. Let's just try running it real quick. Expected five has six. Oh shoot! I put that in the wrong spot. I put it under the the map light, uh, the, the map setup rather than the font setup. The buttons. All right, here we go. Okay. Uh, Close that. We didn't break anything, so that's good. Um. Hello, uh, Ebra Gimdulsi? I, I, sorry, I don't have any clue how to pronounce that name, but hello, and welcome. I'm just fooling around because I can't play StarCraft tonight because my wrists hurt. I work a full-time job and they have been extremely taxing this week. My wrists are extremely sore, and I'd rather not give myself carpal tunnel on top of tendonitis. So, yeah. I'm just chilling out, kind of fiddling around with code. I'm trying to remember how this stupid thing even worked, because... Currently, I cannot remember it at all. Alright. Alright, so player selected count. Okay. Um. One and t if it's two, then it'll grab two. down here, I'll then say if player select count i is greater than 2, then player u i let's just make this a loop real quick, 4 i equals 0 I uh, is less than three. I plus plus player U I 
I dot make visible. There we go. Will this work? Undefined reference to make visible. What? It's right there. Do I not have it in this section? I don't. Ibrahim, okay. Ibrahim. Darn it, am I dropping frames again? Okay, it doesn't seem to be too terrible bad. Twitch keeps showing me as offline and then coming back online and then glitching out all over the place. I I guess maybe I'm not used to Twitch's way of handling things. I'm used to kinda of used to YouTube's less frequent updates that all but seem to be a bit more accurate. Void button make it visible. Uh, return okay visible equals true. Make invisible visible equals false. All right, so there's that. I guess it doesn't make any... The reason why I'm not seeing these things is because I don't have them set up in the loop to render at any point. Where's it at? There it is. Okay. Um... Let's see. Yeah, this can be underneath the draw square. Or the grab square. Player UI dot render. There it is. Now let's see if it works. Okay, well, I've got one that works. I think. Unless they all somehow overlapped each other. Let's, let's space them out a bit more. Let's put that one at 20. Let's put this one at 70. And this one at uh, 130. Not 1300. That'll be off the screen. Okay, how wide are these things? The fact that... I uh, used to play Dota 2 for four years, quit, and started to learn programming for six months. Do I have any advice? Um, well, how are you learning to program? Are you teaching yourself via Google? Um, how, how are you learning to, to try and program? Honestly. How are you learning? Like, are you taking classes? Or are you just trying to teach yourself? Um, and what languages are you learning? That, those would be the important ones. Trying to figure out how come those things are overlapping. I got sidetracked. All right. 30 wide. Let's put these things really, really far apart. There's just a green bar halfway across the screen. We're good. Uh, from tutorials, and you are studying computer science, so you want to do C++ and Swift for programming languages. Um, I don't really have any dealings with Swift. Um, C++, uh, ideally the thing that you want to 
look into is um but what i found for me what, what has helped most is i need to have a goal in mind when i start like for me i wanted to do games so i started looking up various like game uh various game um what am i trying to say here um like game tutorials, there's plenty of them all over the internet. Um, but tools that can help you put a game together. Uh, and, and APIs is what I mean. You want to look up specific uh, APIs. Because you can use... Uh, you want to develop iOS apps. Okay, um... Hmm... Never really developed anything for iOS. I know they have like their own development kits, but I don't know like what that development kit allows you to do. Uh, I know SDL has some stuff that it can tie into it. Um. But if you want to develop an iOS app, um, the first thing you need to understand is when it comes to any kind of an app, and this is true for utility apps, practical application apps. Well, I mean, honestly, you're, you're starting at a good place with just wanting to program. But the reality that you need to keep in mind, and this is something that I have to keep reminding myself even, is it, when it comes to any kind of program design, it's kind of more like making a scrapbook. You know, you have uh, your UI design, like you have each of these icons, you have to draw each one of these things. You have to decide how you want everything laid out. Do you want to have more stuff up here or do you want to keep things more in menus? What functionalities are going to be used to the mouse? What commands you want to put together, uh, things like that. But that's the part of it all that I am actually really bad at. The code and the back-end stuff, although that is certainly the power behind everything, it's what holds everything together, but that's more like the glue in the scrapbook. And I will honestly say, I'm actually very, very good with glue. But the problem is, is if you don't have this other stuff here, it doesn't matter how good you are with the glue. If you can't make it come together as something that is easy to look at. And something that I have found to be a major problem, at least with a lot of apps, is someone who comes from a very strong background on computers. I any, A lot of times I tend to use apps and there's loads and loads of features that are hidden because... Or I never find these features because they're hidden behind a double swipe in a direction or something like that. And that's a... That's just like a failing in the UI's design on the apps at that point. Because... It's a, a thing that's talked about a lot with um, games design, especially if you've ever listen to like designers talking about Dark Souls. Yeah, it's 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 a kind of teamwork. But uh, you hear a lot when people talk about like Dark Souls, enemies telegraphing their moves or enemy or you know, units indicating what they're about to do before they actually do it, you know, like a wind up or something like that. An apps and UIs oftentimes lose a lot of telegraphing just because of the small size of the screen. But something that would really help is if you start the swiping motion and you see, okay, I'm pulling the first screen on, but if I see, like, a little line off to the side that suggests that there might be a page two, then I might continue swiping that direction and seeing what else there is. I mean, the, the thing that I was always... I would always default to initially is these... is just like a tabbed type thing. Like this. I feel like that's the most ideal way to do it, but on a small touch screen, with my 
very heavy hitting fingers. Touch screens don't register where I hit very well at all with either my thumbs or my forefingers. So that's why the swiping is the com more commonly used thing now. I have a, an older smartphone from back in the day of when everything was like contact. And as a result, it, I can't use my phone very well just because the screen's not accurate enough. But, uh... But yeah, I mean, it, it's a lot of just different... different pieces that need to come together. Um... And, uh... Biggest, most advice that I can give you, don't get discouraged because you have had to scrap something, or you've had to abandon a project, or take something back to the ground again. I... I have never been able to actually meet a games developer, but if I ever actually did, one of the things I would ask them is how many times did they ditch the code and go back to scratch because of problems in the infrastructure from the beginning. I just That's just something I want to know because in a game like Skyrim or Dark Souls or something where you have literally hundreds of people programming this stuff. It's the spaghetti code has to be something lethal. I mean, I, what I'm looking at right now, this project probably adds up to... let's see, 300... we'll say 375 lines. Um... This project probably comes in under 4,000 lines of code. And, like, my brain is just bogging down trying to remember everything that I made. So that I can try and fix all of this. Whereas, uh... You know, in a game like Skyrim, that was... That was just millions upon millions of lines of code. I can't imagine what that would have been like. Yeah, you know, just and uh, something else that was um that was said by uh, Yahtzee Croshaw, a a games reviewer who has also developed his own games, and as a result, I have a very high respect for his opinion on games because he does know the effort that goes into them. He's developed two of them thus far. Um, one of the things that he has said is that in his experience. He almost always loses interest in a project about a third of the way through. So it's about, you know, every project is about 4%, or it's about 40% inspiration and then 60% just pure willpower. And what in the world is going on with these buttons? What is happening with these buttons? Seriously. Oh, how many years have passed since I first started to code? Well, if we want to go back to my very earliest days... Shucks, I must have been 14, I think, when I was first wanting to get into it. Um... Yeah, that was back with... That was back with Visual Basic. Like, right at the end of the... Well, in the, in the early 2000s, because it was right as Visual Basic was kind of being phased out as, like, a programming language that anybody started with. But it was hard to get a hold of any kind of decent tools or anything for... Probably about another five or six years. 
Um, it wasn't until I was about... I was about 20, 21, so it was actually about seven... Yeah, about seven years later. It was when I first discovered Linux, and I found out about all of the... Just all the different programming tools that were just there waiting to be used, and that was when I really started getting into it. Uh, the first API that I ever used was, um, it was called Allegro, and it was a Linux port of the old DOS games API. And I found it kind of weird that it was like a C++ AI, uh, or API for DOS, considering that most people I talked about who I have ever talked to who were programmers back in the DOS days, everything was coded in uh, hexadecimal. No, I've never finished any course or any universities or anything like that. This is all just looking things up on Google and School of Hard Knocks. I was thinking about going into college. I even started going to college. Uh, about four years ago, really. I started it because I figured, hey, you know, get into the computers and everything like that. But then I started, I got a, I got a job working for an IT company and I found out that I was just not cut out for this kind of work in any kind of professional capability because especially in this area, IT was less about computer engineering and more about social engineering. You know, making, trying to make people feel good about something they weren't certain about so that they didn't try to just turn around and sue you. Because that was the first thing everybody wanted to do was if it, if their computer didn't work perfectly and they weren't able to play their online game of bridge with their friends, they were going to sue. Oh, they were going to sue. Oh, they were going to sue. And as a professional, I have to say, well, ma'am, you know, we do offer you a warranty. Can you, you know, can you at least give me a chance to fix this warranty or to fix your computer and get it working the way you do want it to before you call in the lawyers? Now, of course, sometimes we couldn't do that. We had, sometimes we had customers who, you know, they dropped their they dropped their laptop in the bathtub, or it got knocked into the swimming pool, or something like that, and the hard drive had completely baked. And they're wanting us to get what we can off of it, and we even attempt to contact, like, actual data recovery centers, and they're like, well, yeah, we'll do it, but it'll be, you know, 900 to to $1,000 to recover this data. And we pass the message on to them, and they go, no, no do it for cheaper. And we're like, well, we can't do it for cheaper. And then they start getting mad at us. And just, I, I worked in that field for about two years. And as the time wore on, it just, it became very clear to me that I was not cut out for that as a professional. And in that time frame, I, I've never learned well in a classroom environment, even throughout high school. And so as a result, just going back into college just reminded me of how bad I was in the classroom environment. And there's nothing worse than going into uh, an environment like that, where everybody around you is very supportive, everyone's really positive about everything, but the only thing that you can think is, you're bad at this, and you know you're bad at this. Why are you doing this to yourself? So I, I finished two semesters in college, and then uh, I just never went back. Simply put, I just, I just never went back. There wasn't any use in trying to continue on with it. But I've continued to just keep looking stuff up. I mean, the, the reality of it was is I could not justify the amount of damage I was doing to my health, the amount of damage I was mentally causing myself, and spending money that honestly could have bought me a, a decent chunk of a house in this area, a, a relatively nice house, all just to teach me myself something that I was already looking up on Google. 
that was my that was the hard thing for me now I have people who they've gone through it like they've they've handled everything and they they've pushed through more power to them but it's not for me that's probably a bit more than you wanted to know with that question but there you have it let's see what was I doing again Oh yeah, I'm trying to figure out how come these buttons just take up a huge amount of screen that they have no right to do. Um... Alright, let's just try placing these things one at a time. Should be a bunch of... Okay, so I've got one right there. That looks really odd, though. It's looking really, really weird. Let's make it 100, and let's see if that thing stretches out. It's supposed to. Okay, there we go. Oh, right, I need to be significantly larger. <laughs> yeah, you, you get the point, yeah. Okay, so the... Oh, right, because this is 720p, so 20 pixels down is going to be longer... Okay. Okay, then, so let's start with you next, and let's size you up in a similar way here. Let's place it at 270, though. Let's make it significantly further down the line. And it's a fair bit down, so it should be da down here somewhere. Except it's not. It's going back over there. Alright, what am I doing here? Right. change these two back. I changed them to the UI box because the UI box is meant for if the if the button has an icon, it won't stretch the icon all weird. For the click zone. Okay. All right, there's that. Uh no. I do not take rap on my streams. Thank you very much. I am sorry OC Remix, but I do not like the raps. I have yet to ever hear a rap that did not sound 100% completely and utterly hostile towards one demographic or another. Okay, oh, this is, uh, Super Mario? Yeah, this is the... Hmm. It's kind of an interesting way of taking that melody. I go on all over the place with it. That's fine. Nothing wrong with that. All right. Okay, so... This one's 100 wide, starting at pixel 20. Let's start this one at 130. Let's make it the same size. Let's just make this one the same size as well. There we go, and then... Uh, let's put that third button at 260. Okay, well, uh, they're scattered all over the place, but that's all good. Let's put them all back along the top where they belong and make sure they're spaced out now. Okay, that one's a little further away. Let's fix that real quick. This that one's 110. This one also needs to be 110, so make it 240. 
All right, now why isn't it showing up the labels? I guess I need to set those, don't I? I can't set them all up as the same. Bummer. Player UI zero dot set label. Uh, what do I do to earn money? Uh, I am... I work in construction. I am an electrician. Which is one of the reasons why my hands hurt so badly today, is we've had a giant house that we had to get done really, really fast. And as a result, I've been stripping a lot of wires. I've been pulling a lot of lar large and difficult to handle wires through very narrow gaps in walls and between boards. And I have been using a drill that has been desperately trying to tear my hands off. So I'm a little sore from from uh, doing that about nine and a half to ten hours a day the whole week. So... That's what I've been... That's what I've been dealing with. I just stream for fun. Just once a week. And, uh... If I do start making enough where I can start getting money out of it... I mean, great. I don't know if I would necessarily give up my, uh, my current job, unless I, unless it was really looking to be extremely viable to keep doing streaming on Twitch and YouTube things. Uh, in the current environment, it's honestly not looking like it's gonna be that way. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, I'm, my position is stable. I mean, the work's not necessarily stable, but I'm, I'm not going to lose my job. I might lose some... I'll lose some hours a few weeks if we don't have enough work to keep me busy for an entire day. But it's that's just kind of how the life of construction goes. You're, you're buried up to your eyeballs one minute, and then the next minute, you're just down to your ankles. And it's just how building houses goes. Weather cycles and scheduling of other trades just affects how how well I can do my job or when I can do my job. So well, you just you just live with it. Okay, why why is the label why are the labels down there? I guess I need to place those too. Nope, um... Do 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 Is that a function I need to add to the buttons this time, is being able to place the labels? Um... Very possible that needs to be a, a variable that I can modify. Am I planning to work for any game company in the future? Um, well, the main reason why I don't work for any gaming companies is because none of them are anywhere near the area where I live. I live up in the northern Texas panhandle. The closest ones are down in, like, Austin, which is a very, very long ways away, and I don't want to move down into that area. I, I, the area where I'm at is where I grew up. This is where my family's at. Uh, I am married, and this is where my wife is at. And everybody likes to visit her, and she's helping out her family. And it's there's not really any there's not really any desire for me to want to move away, even if you know, even if I could score a, a job with a big company. 
I honestly don't know if I'd want it. Um, and the, the, of course, you know, if you don't want to work for a game company, um, the working conditions in the gaming industry are really, really bad, frankly. Um, the major problem that the industry has a lot of times is, well, I mean, there are more than enough YouTube videos talking about it, but you have uh, managers and higher-ups in large positions in industries that have nothing to do with gaming. I mean, the... Uh, I am 29, so I am, I am, you know, not exactly in the young age bracket anymore. I'm certainly a late bloomer when it comes to any of this. Um, but in the in the gaming industry, the people that are calling the shots are frequently people that have never picked up a game controller at all in their lives ever. They're just... I mean, a good example is uh, Konami. They've always been bad with, like, employee treatments and things like that, but recently they fired their old CEO and picked up a new CEO. But this new CEO had only ever been a manager for grocery retail chains. And as far as any business goes, grocery retailers are renowned to be the worst. Because they expect every, the, you know, they put their money into something, and they expect a three-day turnaround at the longest. Which would mean, basically, Hideo Kojima is told to make Metal Gear Solid 5, and he's told that on a Thursday, and they want the game ready by Monday. Well, I mean, obviously, you know, obviously that, that's not gonna work. Yeah, I mean, open my own company, build my own games, I mean, I would do that, except I don't have any experience in actually shipping any actual products of this. I mean, it's little more than a hobby to me right now, and honestly, most of the stuff that I make, I would consider worse than the Unity asset flips that are just burying Steam right now. Honestly. I would consider what I do, I mean, at most, if I were to take, if I were to somehow finish all the games that I've made, I'd like clump them together into like a 10 game bundle and sell it for like a buck 50 or something like that. I, it's not really anything that I would consider a, a worthwhile investment. I certainly wouldn't be okay with charging money for it. But, I mean, I do hope to eventually, you know, maybe figure out something. I mean, there's, there's plenty of tools that I can use. Like, maybe someday I'll buckle down and I'll figure out, like, the Go Dot engine or Unity or something like that. And I'll just, you know, put a little something together. I mean, shucks. I mean, if we want to look at games that did that correctly and did really good, um, Undertale was made in Game Maker. So, you know, there's literally no reason to, uh, there's no reason to not try something, and, I mean, shucks, the first scary game that I ever bought was The Consuming Shadow, which was built by, uh, Yahtzee Croshaw, the Zero Punctuation game reviewer. He, he made The Consuming Shadow, and, uh... I mean, it's, it's a great game. The, if you were to look at the screenshots of the UI and everything, uh, that it's something that is truly ugly and hard, kind of hard to look at, but that's not where your attention is at. So, you know, I do hope to eventually make my own game, but... I don't think it's going to be any point in the future. I feel like I'm going to be more like, uh, 
more like how Notch was, where I don't actually get, like, a commercially successful game out until I'm in my late 50s. And honestly, I hope I'm never as popular as Minecraft was, because Minecraft broke the poor guy. And now, of course, he can, like, you know, go swimming in dollar bills every day. But that's not what he wanted to do. He wanted to make games. But any game that he ever makes now is going to be forever overshadowed by Minecraft. So. But that's always just kind of the... Kind of the, the dangers that come with the... Come with the territory. Like, poor Toby Fox, I don't think we're ever gonna see anything else out of him because everyone's gonna expect it to be like Undertale. But, Undertale is something I don't think you can do twice. Alright, let's... But enough about talking about all that. Let's try and see if we can get these games, or this, these buttons working, now that I'm kind of starting to get back into the hang of what I was doing here. Okay. Player UI, brackets I, dot, select button, mouse X, mouse Y. All right. Should select them. can't tell if I've selected these or not. I don't know if that code's working at all. Um... I am so tired. I just lost my entire train of thought. Um... Uh, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm going to say... If... Selected. Is that a variable in this? Selected? No, it's not. Never mind then. Um. Okay. What do I want to do here? Yeah, no, I, I know I can always do better than in the past. I mean, that's the... Shucks, I, I don't even have... I don't know if I've got the flash drive lying around here. I might have it packed up in my bag, but... I've got some... Bad code from back when I first started, like stuff that I look at now and it's just like, ugh, terrible, terrible, terrible. And I understand that it is necessary to keep an optimistic look at everything, but at the same time, there's a difference between optimism and lying to yourself. You want to make sure that in your optimism, you're not actually causing yourself to be blind to the reality of the situation. Um... Let me see. 
Let's just do a number. So I'll say short button chosen. There we go, and we'll say if If just that, and then uh, button chosen <laughs> equals I plus one. There we go. Okay, so now the idea is I select these guys, I choose a button, and I choose a block. So... Well, I mean, that's very true, you know, if someone can't do something, why can't you? I mean, that's definitely, a That's definitely something motivational, however, the reality of it is... ...is I have worked alongside guys who could easily bench press a semi truck it seems like whereas i know i will never be able to attempt anything like that and any attempts to do so will severely injure me so you know it's just one of those things where you know it's certainly good to to optimize but at the same time you know don't go licking a spark plug whilst because someone's turning the ignition key and they say it's gonna feel good. You know. That's just a good way to really, really hurt yourself. Okay. What am I trying to do here? Okay. Moving the blocks. Shoot, I can't remember how all of this code just... I can't remember how all of this code just spaghettis together. That, that, this is the problem with running spaghetti code. And I've still got that issue I have to sort out. This is one of those points where it's probably most practical for me to just scrap this whole project and take it back to scratch again. To rebuild from the ground up with a much better design in mind. Because this one, it didn't go very far. I always tend to find it works best if I start with the menu screen and work my way into the game from there. And I decided to not do that with this game, and as a result, I'm now dealing with all of this. This exact problem. But, let's see if we can fix this. So... Okay, left button down. Hmm. Okay, so... Alright, so... I have them selected. UI make it visible. Actually, you know, let's just let's try and make sure that that. Ah, but is that gonna be even? You know what? Heck with it. Okay. 
go. Make invisible. Alright, there we go. Say lift. Yeah. Yeah, no, it takes a lot of hard work, and of course the... If you if you want to get into anything in game design, or if you just want to see, like, get a lot of insight into how a lot of stuff in games design works, there's a YouTube channel by the name of Extra Credits. Um, the guy that writes the episodes is an active games designer and is something of an industry veteran. I believe he said his... His career started out either like in the late days of the PlayStation 2 or right at the beginning of the 360 PlayStation 3 era, and he's worked on everything from uh, everything from Farmville to Call of Duty. Like he's just seen it all. So uh, you can just watch those episodes. They talk about everything from just little. Uh, um, what was I? What am I trying to say here? Like just, just little things from like, you know, UI design to UX design to like game designing a game that respects your player as a person, respects their time. You know, building in organic exit points. Little things like that, I mean, it's just a lot of... There's a lot of very interesting things when it comes to that sort of thing, and they also did some special episodes in their early days about, like, the working conditions, and... Granted, that was the working conditions from five years ago, and that was right before the big spring-up of the indie market, but... still. The, the working conditions are still not great today and i mean it really they, they're better today than they ever have been in the past but the reason why that there has even been any light shed on this at all was because in 2004 a woman called the cops to report that her husband was missing because he hadn't been home for four days because the company he was working for which i believe was actually ea they wouldn't let him leave because he needed to get his project done. So he was literally just passing out from exhaustion at his desk in his chair. Then waking up and like eating a snack and then getting back to work on something. And his, his wife had kind of figured out what was happening as this had been like a build-up point and then she decided to blow the whistle by calling the cops on his business on his workplace and okay yeah I, I, I'm afraid to say this but I, I hate to say this but I'm, I'm afraid I'm gonna have to just take all this stuff apart <clears throat> I'm gonna have to start taking apart this whole project. I can leave the render code here. Some of this infrastructure code will work just fine, but like this interactive stuff... I'm gonna have to rework the players, I'm gonna have to rework... Especially the blocks, I'm gonna have to really change up the blocks. Um... Yeah, I'm gonna have to tear all this apart. This is kind of the hardest part, but, you know, one of the things that they said in a... One of the more recent episodes... I say recent, I, I, it's one that sticks with me a little more, but I think it's like a year old now. But it it's basically like, you know, fail faster, declare something broken, unusable, and it needs to be scrapped and ta or taken back to the drawing board. 
the quicker you decide that, the less you lose in doing so. It's not too bad there. This one's okay. The render code is fine, because that, that stuff's pretty simple. Grab square code, that's all good. Correcting that, that's all good. This stuff needs to be taken care of. That. Some of this seems to be okay. Um, let's see, this... That's a bit of a mess. I think this is a complete and utter wreck. Yeah, I'm gonna have to start tearing stuff apart. Just cutting out code in large amounts here. Well, no time like the present, I suppose. So, where to begin, again, from? I don't like how I did this, but I, I'm not really going to have too much of a choice with that. Let's actually, you know what, let's just start with the blocks. <laughs> Let's figure out what all is just fluff and is not needed and can be done better. Um. Oh, go. Well, have a good night, Abraham. Or I Ibrahim. Have a good night, man. Glad to glad to answer your questions. Thanks for giving me something to talk about, and more importantly, someone to talk to, because I do tend to just ramble, and I, I like to think I'm good at rambling, but that's not always the the best skill to have. Alright, so when it comes to the block code... Okay, I need to... You know what, I'm not even going to try and fix this code. I don't want to lose that code. Because it will be a nice reference point to have. So, let's, uh... Let's try it this way. Let's start with a new project. C++ app. Let's go. RTS. Lava blocker. Try two. All right, first things first, let's get the linker configured. I followed your channel and waiting for more streams? Well, thank you. Thank you for doing so. So two underscore TTF. Yeah, see ya. Uh, let's see. What is it? Is it? It's the one for boost. So I have SDL two image graphics. 
I mean, boost, just boost dash system. Okay. HL, uh, SDL2, image, dash L, boost, underscore, system. All right. Now let's start copying some things over. Engine, the SDL font caches, includes, uh, the timer and the events. Is there anything else worth bringing over? The button code. So that'll be nice to have. Hmm. Let's just paste all that in here. I believe that's all I need. Because everything else needs to be taken back to scratch. Just the players, the blocks, and... Literally everything else. Alright, so... Let's, uh... Let's get our class going. Game. Um, okay. First thing to include is the includes. Second thing to do is make sure all appropriate headers are already added to the project because otherwise NetBeans throws a big fit over it all. That's not the right one. RTS Lava Blocker, try two. There go. That one, that one. That one, that one, that one. And that. Add that all in. Let's add the sources in so that that way it's... It knows where to find those. Because it's a little bit gimpy like that in the brain area. All right. Ah. Uh, let's see. Let's go. Okay, that's the includes, and then let's say engine. Just a little more than just a bit of wrapper code. What all did I have in that anyway? Eh, just the, just the texture loading really is all I had. Handy to have, though. Definitely handy to have. All right. Let's include the events. Let's inherit that class real quick. Let's include... <laughs> let's include the SDL font cache. Actually, you know what, let's just include the SDL font clash cache here in the includes. Why not? Saves a line in here. Alright, let's also get in that timer that I built. Alright. Let's 
Let's open up the main. Let's include the game. That's all we need. And then uh, let's... Run. Is all we need here. And all we need in this currently is game run return zero. There we go. And now here we just tell it uh, we, we go game world. And tell it to return world. Dot run. And we're good. That's all we have to do in the main. Goodbye. We can even run it. It'll build. Put everything together. And boom. Okay was done in about 20 milliseconds. That's a bit odd, but okay. I mean, system didn't register it, user didn't register it, but it counted the uh, CPU cycles it probably took to build the thing. So, yeah. All right, so I've been streaming now for about an hour and 40, so we're not going to get anywhere near where we were before. But that's all okay. That's all fine and dandy. Let's just try and get some of the infrastructure set back up. Okay, set render draw color. Um, SDL get the render draw color. Render clear with the drawing color. Okay. Okay, let's take this, copy, stick it, in here, that in there real quick so we can eliminate any so we can eliminate any of those little pesky things that pop up mm. excuse me this set up. Let's just do this real quick. Let me see if I can find that, figure out that FPS manager again. I 
FPS, thank you. I have it as FPS cap. Alright, there we go. That's done. Get rid of that, and now let's put in the window. There we go. Got that done. Ah. Okay. Should be in the clear still. All right, well, I don't have return true here at the end. You got me, Clang. You got me. Thank you, Clang. I'm in the clear now. Oh. Uh. Oh. And you know what? I am tired, so I think I'm gonna leave it here. I think I will leave it here at, uh, at this juncture with the previous iteration of the lava blocker having not worked, and the second iteration getting underway. And I will go ahead and leave you here. If you wish to see more of this or want to uh see more streams like this or see just see me do any other streams uh by all means click the follow button uh if you miss any part of this stream you want to hear it again i will be uploading it to youtube as soon as i'm finished here it will be immediately uploaded over to youtube and if you are uh, interested in catching more of me just doing stuff, uh, by all means, feel free to drop in next week. Same time, same channel, same place. Have a good night, everybody.